everyone, and I am Jessica Zartler with The Common Stack here with another edition of the Trusted Seed Spotlight. I'm really excited to introduce you to a wonder woman in the token engineering space, and she is working on so many projects we can't keep up with her. Shabnam Jessica, <laughs> how are you? Good, Jessica. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We uh, love to highlight the amazing work you're doing. And so you're based in Munich, Germany. You're originally from Turkey. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you land in the token <laughs> engineering space? Oh, um, that was actually pretty, uh, pretty smooth landing. <laughs> Um, uh, I was in peer-to-peer -peer systems since my studies uh, and went into decentralized energy systems during my career at Siemens. And basically around 2016, uh, I had this total tech freak out and I'm like, okay, this is happening. Blockchain, the infrastructure is there for our decentralized energy systems to also have decentralized business and financial models. I'm out of here. <laughs> and I this freelio and I realized um, we are, are actually with token engineering or I didn't know we we're calling it token engineering then but uh, I realized that we are really embedding programmable values into uh, infrastructures in our case energy and with that project we would literally embed them into other people's livelihoods in off-grid in totally far off places and that's where I thought oops okay uh, I don't have the tools to do that, <laughs> uh, these humanistic tools. And that's basically just three weeks later, I met Zaryam and uh, everyone probably in our domain knows him. And he's got this broad view of token or he's got this broad view of uh, societies in the digital era, in the information era. And uh, basically learning from him, I went into token engineering uh, and basically also can put my technical background fully into it, but learning a ton of all of the socio-technical aspects that we need to take care of. Also the engineering ethics that, uh, you know, as a software engineer, uh, it's quite new. Uh, yes, but uh, we need to put that into as well. So. Literally, how did I get into token engineering? I don't know, but it uh, happened and uh, potentially it happened because we've been all moving towards these um, these patterns that we see coming from very different uh, backgrounds, but uh, drawn by the same uh, vision or possibilities. Mm. So yeah, maybe just feeling into it and all um, kind of building into it without even knowing so, <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. you've got so many things on the go right now a lot of projects um you've got the token engineering academy you've got the hitchhiker's guide to token engineering which is a very fun and kind of playful and cool approach and almost writing a textbook um, and then electro seed fund and freelio so if you can um with our kind of shorter time uh give us a uh, high level overview of what these are and maybe how they fit together. Yeah. So Freelio um, is what I started to actually be able to research these new uh, new business and financial models in a decentralized uh, um, infrastructure, on a decentralized infrastructure. And it now has become what it is. It's an open innovation collective. And I love working in, in networks, working with peers, and uh, we're building into it. And we will come back to it when the technology and the people building this technology out are ready for it. Uh, but it would really bring information, electricity information and financial infrastructure into uh, off-grid uh, rural areas, basically giving people the tools and the uh, possibility to self-determine their, their digital prosperity. Um, however, as mentioned, there are many, many different things that uh, were also difficult that no token engineering in the world could uh, remedy, namely the risk of investing in only one such project in one such region. So out of these, this, this knowing what is missing, 
uh, Electra Seed Fund grew and Electra Seed Fund basically builds on the idea that we need to diversify the risk of investing in, uh, you know, maybe crisis regions. There is a high risk, you can't just take it away. But when we pool those projects in high impact, high social impact uh, regions, but risky regions, with projects, same type projects, also clean energy projects here in Germany, uh, we're basically leveling off the risk. Uh, helping the high social impact to be realized uh, and mixing it with the impact that is um, also there, but not as uh, high of clean energy projects in developed countries. So this is Electra Seed Fund. It builds on um, basically accelerating, uh, bringing, um, um, yeah, bringing uh, growth capital to scale ups in clean energy access anywhere in the world, also incentivizing uh, these projects and basically the communities uh, to use the electricity available to them in, in an efficient manner. We were fully into it, developing, building into it when Corona happened and it put the brakes on everything and everyone. And with me, uh, it was then basically when I thought, okay, what, what am I really lacking? And that was basically people, uh, peers, right? I want to work with peers. And I realized that I kept a lot of my time was actually talking and explaining people what it is, what we're doing. And um, I'm not a master communicator and not very efficient at it. So I wanted to find a way to actually do it once. <laughs> once and for all and then just uh be be finished with it and that's how a hitchhiker's guide to token engineering the book about token engineering or on token engineering came uh to light and i said it should have the same uh crypto economics uh than electra seed funds so actually we can keep building it while i'm writing the book uh, with others on it it's a crowdsourced, crowdfunded book, uh, like Electro Seed Fund is a crowdsourced uh, crowdfund. Um, and basically the book is currently happening. We have started with chapter four, token, uh, gen token model generation. And one of the subsections uh, literally became a four day course. Uh, we just finished with it. You can uh, maybe also share uh, the reactions to it. Uh, we loved it. People loved it. So I think we're on the on the right uh, right uh, path by sharing this um, knowledge. What are some of the biggest challenges you see? We were talking a little bit um, before uh, we were recording about just the very like human side. Uh, we're used to working under one kind of paradigm and system and framing of, you know, it's very linear. You get paid for this and there's value of this and you get external validation like this and these are the signals. But now we are in this transition period where we're moving into a new way of operating, especially, I mean, open source communities already have been operating this way for some time, but now um, those of us who are kind of entering, what are some of the challenges that you see? So that's exciting because that what the possibility open to us now is also new to even open source communities. Like we had this still current do dominant paradigm, uh, you know, how to allocate resources and the CEO on the top knows best, can decide fast, and this is how you organize everything, right? Even in open source, you have the, the same type of role, the, the benevolent dictator for life, uh, BDFL, it's a, it's a thing. Um, so to be honest, now we have the possibility for the first time, maybe truly decentralize this coordination of, of resource allocation. All this founder team and then the first employee logic shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. So it should really be um, equal from the start, equitable from the start. And these are very new things. We don't know how to go about. <laughs> We're figuring it out right now. <laughs> and finally, if we can just touch on um, to wrap, you know, uh, I guess you 
you seem pretty inspired already. So what would you share with people as like a word of encouragement or um, what's been a big inspiration to keep you going along this path? Mm. Oh, the people have been inspiring, definitely. Um, but to be honest, it just while I was digging a bit deeper into, into, you know, background research for the book and also for the course, um, basically, actually, this this really understanding that we live in a very complex world that is also hyper connected now. It's literally maybe previously it was complex, but it wasn't that connected. Meaning things that you changed didn't have a butterfly effect, <laughs> but they now have uh, almost right. So how do you deal with such a situation without despair or without you know uh, letting go? It's you do let go, and I have this. Mm, I found this um, saying or, or from Donella Meadows. Um, basically, she says, it's actually the, the mastery of this complex system is actually strategically, profoundly and madly letting go. Right. And uh, so and that's just what I heard a couple of days back. And uh, this for me was now very inspiring <laughs> in a sense uh it gives you the freedom to say okay i cannot and uh, i will not determine everything plan out everything and you know be that kind of a problem solver or leader or what have you but really to be in the system to see where you are to see what you can affect and then also to enable others uh, to to be in their uh, realm or in their networks effective and also exchange exchange a lot so we uh, still know or learn what we mean uh, when we're talking about this new decentralized uh, value systems and uh, the new paradigm where um, we are we live in a more equitable world right we seem to know what it is or to, to feel what it is or to see a bit into the future. But uh, if you look around, we're <laughs> very far off. <laughs> mm -hmm. So how do we get there by uh, being in this very complex connected world? And how do we make use of, of that to actually, yeah, take step uh, by step uh, and build these new um, systems, um, you know, they are not just products. They are not just organizations. I think we are, we're we're building and communicating our new worldview mm -hmm. right now. Mm. Yeah, maybe we hit, we're hitchhiking through a new digital space. So glad. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time, Shabnam. We appreciate it. And thank you all so much for watching the Trust Seed Spotlight. We'll see you next time.